Hey everybody, welcome back to Naturally Supernatural. It's been quite a while since we've been back on air. Um, a lot of things have happened. I know Pastor Tom and Josh here have experienced some amazing things. So have I. But before we jump in, can we get a little update from you guys? We've been gone. Naturally Supernatural hasn't been on for four months. Wow, can you goodness. guys believe it? Wow. Yeah, four months since I last checked our four records. Months. Oh, it's just like yesterday. It feels like yesterday. <laughs> that we, we did our yeah. last recording, yeah. Didn't yeah. feel that long, yeah. Yeah. So, Josh, what's happening? Uh, it's been a lot faster. Trying to raise some, <laughs> raising up my kids, for sure. That's one. Yeah. Uh, ministry, mm. however people define that. I know you've been away. You should tell us mm. more on that. Yeah, oh no, I, I, I just needed a break. Yes. You need a break. Yeah, and I went away for two and a half months almost uh, to the island of Maui. Mm. And, uh, you know, just experiencing the goodness of God That's and it. the beauty and the Creator's, you know, uh, design. It's just so beautiful. The island is so beautiful. But more than that, uh, you know, sometimes we forget that uh, even when we're taking vacation, God is not on a vacation. Amen. So, <laughs> come on. so true. Yeah. So <laughs> always. Uh, yeah. So I don't know about a lot of people out there. Like you know, if you are not answering his calling, mm -hmm. meaning that you are not totally sold out for him, for mm -hmm. the king, um, you tend to want to do things on your own. Sometimes, even when you go on vacation, or even right. not on vacation, mm -hmm. you tend to take the reins, and and then you want to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. But every time you try to do that. God's going to do his thing, you Come know, on. because he has to move his agenda, yeah. his will, which is his original intent. Mm -hmm. The will is his original intent, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, you know, so along the way, you know, I experienced so many things. Like one one of the things that happened to me was I was lining up at uh, at a grocery, uh, an organic grocery, mm. farmer's market grocery. <laughs> and I bought all the mangoes and stuff. Like, you know, I love mangoes, right? <laughs> right. And then, and then there was this uh, little old lady behind me, and she had one of those walker thing, you know, and she was bent over; she couldn't stand up mm -hmm. straight. And I noticed her; she was right behind me. And then I, I tried to quickly pay, you know, because then she has, she's not in such agony, right. waiting behind me. And so, and then, and then I had my kingdom batch of me you know my pendant those of you who know me I wear a pendant <laughs> with the star of david on it and and kingdom then sheriff. yeah king says kingdom sheriff and then and then so this uh by the way you know i have to handle at kingdom sheriff you want to follow me on instagram, <laughs> instagram. Right? there you go oh, yeah, you guys should. Anything. yeah should. <laughs> oh actually on twitter yes um, at kingdom sheriff yeah so you know so this this guy at the tail he says so so what is that? Like, you know, are you some sort of a sheriff or something? You know, why are you wearing that badge? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm a different kind of sheriff in a different kind of realm. And mm. then he started laughing at me. He said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, well, I'm called by God in the healing ministry. Mm. Come on. Wow. And he goes, yeah, okay. You know, he was just like He's laughing. like, who's this crazy guy? Yeah, he was like, <laughs> you know, I've seen a lot of crazies. Here comes another one, right? So right. anyhow... He says, so, you know, so you're in the business of healing? I said, yeah. And then he laughed. And then the lady behind me started tugging mm, my shirt. Mm. And I, I look behind. She goes, I want to be healed. Wow. Come on. And that, in that moment, I just remembered that lady that was bleeding 12 yes. years. Right. And then she went and touched Jesus' mm -hmm. clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she goes... If I can only touch him, I know I'll be healed. Right. Faith. And so that faith, it's mm -hmm. amazing. So I said, I turned around and said to her, I said, hey, I said to her, um, why don't we pay our bills, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whatever we're buying, our groceries. And then there's a small table that will just come to the song. I'll, I'll lay my hands on you and pray over you. So I asked for her name. I prayed over her. And voila, she stood up straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> she stood up straight. She started walking around without a come walker. On. And she was, and then I, I saw her smile mm. and I recorded her. I said, can you say something? That's so it. So I actually recorded her. She goes, you know what? After you prayed, I don't have any more pain. In Hallelujah. I don't have any more pain. And Touch. I said, how about this? You become a testimony. You go up to the counter. You, mean, you, mean you, ask, you want me to tell Richard? I said, yeah, you go up there <laughs> and you tell him 
that you can walk straight without the walker and you're you're fine no more pain <laughs> so she walked up to him and then she That's said it. that to him and then he was just floored uh-huh. and then you know after that you know when i went back to that grocery again <laughs> he didn't laugh at me anymore Aye. he would always give me a pound and goes right good job keep doing what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> So that's my that's one of the many testimonies. Yes. I, I want to hear something from Come you, on. Josh. You know, oh, like this show naturally is a, supernatural. Yeah. Amen. Right? This, Where do we God begin? Is still working. Yes, Lord. Well, I kind of <laughs> want to follow up with what you said there earlier. Um, while on vacation, sometimes you know we forget that God still wants to move. God wants to to actually interrupt our you know vacation schedule, and yeah, like with that four months out of that four months that we've been away. Uh, doing this, I believe, you know, during August, we were, we get an opportunity to, to go for a cruise, like a five day, four day, five day cruise. And, nice. and then that, you know, really hit me. I think the Lord took me in that to really correct me and rebuke me, mm. you know, with some of the things that I'm still learning. Yes. Or you don't stop growing in him. Yeah. That's his grace. That's his mercy. And in that, you know, I just, I just, I found myself, you know, w- with everyone else that's in that cruise, you know, I really, you, there, it's so hard to tell which one is, you know, believer mm-hmm. of Christ, which one is, you know, the real, what we consider Christians. Because you you blend in so good. Uh, okay. You blend in so good, right? Yeah. Where here I am, I do all this ministry work, but there's no way of telling that, you know, I'm a son. Mm. And, and I just took that as a, Hmm. you know what, well, to begin with, it's up to me to begin with. Mm. It was up to me. You know, if the Lord was speaking that way. But again, there there was that heart where, well, Lord, I'm on vacation, right? <laughs> and like what you just said earlier, yeah, it should not, you shouldn't allow God to, to work with you even in that. Because mm. sometimes that's where he wants to, to really minister. Mm. Uh, when you find yourself in the personal, you know, yeah. in your personal time, basically. Yeah. But anyway, so I got out of that, you know, not much to to share in terms of testimony out of that cruise. But what takes what took place after that cruise, we were we got a chance to stay over at my one of our family friend in LA. Mm. That's when I really took advantage of, you know, okay, God, you know, you mm. you exposed that heart. Now I have repented. Mm. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for reminding me. And now I'm going to obey your voice. Mm. So we got an opportunity to minister with um, our family friend that lives in L.A. Mm. And she had just got out of uh, this major surgery. And and again, she, 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 she knows the Lord. She claims. But the whole supernatural is not something that she's exposed with. Mm. Long story short, uh, I began to just hear words about that's happening in her life. And again, the whole healing gift things that we were aware and we know God has given to each one of us, you know, because, you know, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mm. This goes out for every believers Mm -hmm. of him. And, you know, she was feeling somewhat of a pain from from that, you know, from that part where she had surgery and just having a hard time to sleep, which I called out because I heard from the Lord. And long story short, we prayed over her. The Lord touched her in that moment. She would not usually cry. Apparently, you know, when it comes to these things, mm. but she just broke out because the Holy Spirit just filled okay. her, touched her with her love, Hallelujah. with His love. Mm. And the Lord began to reveal to me that there is some statue somewhere in their house. Mm. Sure enough, there was that mm. one mm. figurine that needs to get out mm. because this is one of the things that is hindering her from having mm. that, you know, sleep properly and we we prayed over her and we got rid of that one statue that shouldn't be there mm. and she had the best sleep ever wow. for the last six months she said the following mm. day and she was just all ears all eyes yes after that and she had she has a uh somebody that's living tenant. with her tenant downstairs and we were able to minister with him as mm-hmm. well and from there like honestly to this that was august to this day it's mm-hmm. been a supernatural journey, I would mm-hmm. say. And there's so many more to, to share. Yeah. But just a couple of things that I thought maybe, you know, even on our vacation, that, that is definitely something that 
God is always speaking, mm. always speaking, always wanting to mm. move and always wanting to touch somebody. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. And we give him praise. We give him glory for, for those breakthroughs. And now we, we've, we've kept in touch with them. Mm-hmm. Relationship is just the Lord is reminding us that there's people out there that is in need, in need of a breakthrough, a touch from God. So, yeah. Wow. Mm. Wow. I just, uh, you know, even listening to you, um, I'm just trying to, you know, feel for our audience who just listen to that. And just want to clarify something like what Josh did there with the idol. It's not some uh, hocus pocus thing. Right. It's actually biblical. Mm-hmm. And so so the, the, the truth of the matter is that, you know, uh, Matthew 22, 37 uh, Jesus said that love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and so that tells us that our God really come on um, yes yeah demands our full attention yeah. because you know He loves us and He wants to make us successful. So every time we veer away from that and we we mm. we have some sort of a, some I- idol idol can be anything mm-hmm. idol can be a video game that you right. play nonstop or it can be anything. And when when you focus on those things and and not focus on the maker, it makes it harder for him to try to speak to you and tell you how to be successful in your walk here on earth. It's good. So that's the reason why Josh was talking about the idol. And Josh, is that Thanks. am I right? Or yes, no, yeah, absolutely. So I, I just wanted to clear that up so that you're not yeah. thinking that we are into yeah. some sort of a superstition thing right. over here. But we're talking about a supernatural God that demands our Come attention on. because he yeah. is our maker and we belong Come to on. him. Amen. Amen. Wow. Word, word. Yeah. That's amazing. I think the beautiful thing about it is even though we did have that four four month break from being on air, God was still moving in, in ways that, yes. you know, we might have not been able to share it with you guys on online and whoever else is listening, but you guys can see that the supernatural still does exist to this day. It, it mm-hmm. And it doesn't always have to be some atomic bomb that lands on a person because, I mean, we've always witnessed that. Mm-hmm. Um, but even in the most simplest of things of, for example, Pastor Tom, mm-hmm. you know, u- utilizing that sheriff's, ba- sheriff's badge on mm. him and mm. then it becoming a conversation starter mm. and it being an open way for the lady behind you to actually have that faith to pull on you mm. and then the same thing for josh josh for having that courage to that recognizing that you know despite being on the cruise ship and not being able to i guess flat out identify himself as mm. a son of god or a son of god on that cruise ship you know there's still that redemptive work where you know, despite being on holiday, you can still mm. allow God to move in you and through you. And, you know, in every facet of our lives, if if we allow ourselves to be a conduit of God, he actually does things. Mm. You know, same thing for the last four months. A lot of changes have happened. Right. Some of you guys may or may not know. I've, you know, ha- had a change in, in job, mm. which is different from work, but <laughs> it, it's a job. Um, right. But even in that, like allowing God to move in these moments, you know, recently ha- having to have exchanged, um, giving words and just allowing Holy Spirit to really move to my people that I, I actually interact with on a daily basis and see what happens. It it's the most fulfilling and humbling thing at the same time. Mm. Um, and what I mean by that is there's such a responsibility when you, when you know what you carry and what you can do. Mm. And if you actually act on it, how, it. how powerful it yes. can be, not just for yourself, but for the person that you're actually allowing God mm. to, to speak through you. Mm. But it's also humbling because it's like, wow, God, out of this, you know, however many people we have in this earth, 7 billion or whatever the count is, Eight. you're still willing to just look at me and use me as a conduit, despite mm. my my shortcomings or, mm. you know, lack thereof. Yeah. But my point being is if we're not hearkened to what the Holy Spirit is doing and we're not actually paying attention to him grabbing our attention, even in the stillest things, I think that's that's the one thing I've discovered mm-hmm. in the last four months where I don't need a big yellow sign to tell me that God's hearkening to me. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit's voice is so, so peaceful and so Come on. like the nudge is so gentle mm-hmm. where you could actually miss it. 
really mm. quick. Yes. But if you're not intentional and you're not actually aware of the supernatural things that you carry and that you you're you have the capabilities of doing, not on your own strength, but you relying on God, mm. there's a whole nother realm that Pastor always tells us about, like earlier, how he shared he's not from this realm mm. that that the world has yet to discover. You know, people are actually wanting to hear from God. People are actually mm. wanting a touch from this person that we have already recognized and accepted. And mm. so in saying that, Pastor, mm. my question is to you. Um, for, I know before there's always that parable of the 10 virgins in the Bible. Mm. And growing up in church, you always hear, you know, be prepared for when Jesus comes, you know, mm. because, you know, mm. there was the, the, the wise virgins and then the foolish virgins. Mm. But why was it always hearkened to having oil? Like mm. I understood it back in the day, you needed mm. oil to light a lamp. Right. But I know God for being a God of detail and he just doesn't say things just to say things because it's, it's there. Yeah. But I remember growing up in church and that just always was the, the story that iterated in my mind that you have to have oil because the oil rely, like the light, relies on the oil that you have mm. but what exactly is it what exactly is the deeper yeah. i guess story to it as we always have come to understand being on right, this right <laughs> journey good question uh joyce you know um to understand anything mm -hmm. from the bible mm -hmm. you must first understand kingdom kingdom concept mm -hmm. and why jesus came to preach of the kingdom of heaven his whole entire purpose of coming here was he was sent because he was mm. sent to preach the kingdom of heaven That's and so mm -hmm. if we don't start with that uh point uh, we will go off and so a lot of people uh sometimes they don't have the concept of the kingdom of heaven so they they've never been told they've mm. never been taught and, yeah. and so they end up uh, preaching uh passages from the bible based on how they feel it should be relating to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to fit the Bible into their lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that very obvious that came out of that passage was that you got to be ready. But what was Jesus preaching? Jesus was preaching about the kingdom of heaven there. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he was saying then the kingdom of heaven. He started by saying then. That means he was prophetically saying that in the kingdom of heaven, when I, basically when he went to the cross, died on the cross, rose again on the third day, something is happening, right? And yeah. that something is the beginning of the ecclesia, the church. And so he was actually prophetically talking about the church having two different forms, <laughs> okay? And he mm. spoke of the church as, you know, the actors in this passage were the ten virgins. Mm -hmm. Basically, the ten virgins Basically, I'm not talking about how they are defiled or something like that. Mm. No, basically, you're being sanctified. You're just being sanctified. You're yeah. clean. Mm. You're clean. You're, 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 right. You qualify. Yeah. You know? So when you come to Christ, when you hear of the word, the ministry of the word, um, you, you're cleansed. You mm. come to Christ and people come to Christ and, you know, they, 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 they acknowledge Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're cleansed. But there's something else that happens after that, you know? Yes. Here's the something else. Jesus in John 14, 15, 16, you know, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. So there is the ministry of the Holy Spirit that comes in play with the ministry of the Word. So we were talking earlier a lot about healing yeah. and this and that. So sometimes too that people who are into that... Um, so much so that they forget about the ministry of the word. Mm. So to answer your question, the lamb actually represents the ministry of the word. Mm. And, you know, the word is the lamb to my feet. feet. So ah. you, you understand that that is the ministry of the word. But what Jesus was trying to say is this. There are two groups of you that's going to form mm -hmm. in the kingdom. One with the ministry of the word, the lamb. Mm -hmm. And the other one with the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit, which is the oil. The mm. oil always symbolizes the Holy Spirit in the Bible. You talk mm. about anointing, you talk about flow, you talk about you know agility and how the Holy Spirit will do things that 
that just blows your mind, like what we talk about yeah. and how the lady got healed just like that. And there were many, many other incidences on the on the island. I remember I was invited up to uh, the mountains up at Kula and the, the, you know, the lady that yes. got healed mm. um, of her barrenness. She actually, you know, we prayed over her four years ago and mm. she conceived. Come yes. on. She tried yes. for 10 years and she got so excited. The, the joy and the love in her that she actually invited people from all over the island to come to her come yes. on her house which was not that not a big home so people actually there was an overflow of people people they were so come full on. in the house they were like people outside of the house <laughs> and so it was like and then you know here here's the miracle like you know i spoke for like i was ministering in the word for like almost an hour and a half mm-hmm. and because people came from all kinds of background they were like confused yes questions. some of them are like questions some yeah. are very deep questions and some are very <laughs> intelligent super intelligent questions yes not in not like people are not intelligent as in asking other no. questions i'm just saying that those were really deep questions about the world and this yeah. and that so after about an hour and a half i was thirsty to begin with <laughs> and i said you know what how about if i don't talk about anymore and demonstrate kingdom to you mm-hmm. then what do you mean by demonstrating kingdom i said well i've spoken of the kingdom to you let me demonstrate kingdom. There was a child, there was an eight-year-old child that was running wild outside because he has, uh, you know, in the in the world, they call medical it... Medical term. Ex- yeah, medical term is like extreme, I don't know, ADHD or mm, mm. What, what he had there. And he was running around the compound. We can hear him just screaming and he can only speak 10 words. Wow. And then I said, why didn't you bring the boy in? Mm. And they brought the boy in. I laid my hands on his head mm. and I said, be healed in Jesus. He fell down. That's it. And he was out <laughs> cold. Hallelujah. He was out cold. In fact, they got so frightened. Yeah. Because it's not normal. Yeah. Let me tell you something. We operate in the supernormal as our normal. <laughs> and that's what kingdom, <laughs> you know, kingdom uh, citizens yes. are like to mm. the local citizens until they come into the kingdom and mm. they realize it's a greater and superior reality than what they have been experiencing. So when he fell down and he was out cold, slain in the spirit, we call it in, in, a, in a language, um, you know, he was there and they were concerned. I said, no, God is just working on him. Yes. And after about 20 minutes, here's the thing, right? Here's the impartation. After 20 minutes, God just spoke to me. He says, wake him up. Wake him up. I mm-hmm. said, yeah, wake him up. So I reached my hand down mm. to the boy that was out cold. And all of a sudden, he reached his hand up, <laughs> eyes closed and everything. He's not even seeing me. He reached his hand up and he grabbed my hand. And I, on. and I spoke in Aramaic at that time. I didn't know what I was speaking. Mm. And I told him later on, you know, of course, my dear wife is always recording everything. And, and, and I was saying to him in Aramaic, get up, boy. Mm. Come get on. up, boy. Yes. And when he got up, he was healed. Wow. Praise God. He was no longer a hyper- he was no longer only Speak. restricted to yeah. 10 words. He was just speaking and talking. Come on. He was crying Come and on. the dad started crying. They were hugging Aww. each other. And wow. I tell you, that's it. That's a miracle. Yes. And that is demonstrating kingdom. But coming back to my uh, answer to your question about the oil and, yes. and the lamp, is that sometimes in, as, as believers, we are not aware that you need oil. Mm. You need to have that oil to be ready, and the Holy Spirit is the symbolic meaning of uh, uh, meaning behind the oil, the oil, the oil that flows. Um. Right? You know of the history in the Bible. You read about how you know how the prophet was looking for the king, king. the new king. And yes. He, yes, yes. You know Samuel. He came to the house of Jesse, and he was looking for the boy and uh, the the person. You know, and, yes, and, and he knew, God told him that the oil will flow when you find the right person. Mm. And they brought all these kids and they all the sons, the handsome one, the good tall, good looking one, tall the dark and handsome ones, one. Yeah. They, the oil would not flow. Mm. The Holy Spirit saying, you got the wrong guy. Hallelujah. And then they were looking for another guy. He says, do you there have another son? He said, yeah, yeah, I'll go think something, you know, whatever. He in call the field, him in. yeah. And, and and so David walked and he was a young boy and the oil started flowing. Wow. So in ministry, you need the ministry of the word, which is the lamp, mm. and the ministry of the oil, which is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You need both of them. 
So mm. when you have both of them, all of a sudden you are walking in that anointing with the word. Now it's really important. We're not downgrading or downplaying the word. We're saying mm-hmm. the ministry of the word is powerful. That's how you came to Christ. Mm-hmm. That's how you got your salvation. Is because you heard the word. But the word, Jesus Himself, right? In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word the is God. God. He himself went to John and said, "You know, you need to baptize me because mm. this is a requirement. Why? Because he needed that oil. Mm. The Holy Spirit came upon him once he got baptized, and then his ministry started. So, oil and lamb have wow. to work hand in hand. Remember this: if you're just working in the ministry of the word without the oil." There's a lack of power because the Holy Spirit is known as the dunamis, the power of God. That's it. But if you work with just the oil without the lamp, it's a dangerous thing. Yes. You know that you got all this power, and you know you don't have any boundaries mm-hmm. that God has spoken into. Like the oil has to fit into the shape of the lamp. lamp. So it's really important for us to understand that when you move in ministry, you have to have the lamp and the oil. And wow. then you're ready, because any time when God shows up in that story, mm-hmm. that parable, it was the groom, right? The groom shows up. Yeah. Mm. God shows up. He wants you to do something. There is a door. It talks about that. The parable talks about a door. What the door was shut for those who went and bought oil because mm-hmm. yeah. they didn't have enough oil, mm-hmm. but they wanted to borrow from the ones that had oil and yeah. lamp. And the people that had oil and lamb, the virgins go, you know what, go to the merchant and buy your oil from him. So when they went away, the groom showed up. <laughs> right? Mm. So that tells you you got to be ready. Yeah. You got to be on. ready. You got to be ready to move in the ministry of the word and ministry of the oil, which is the spirit. Because if not, then the door closes. In the story, the, door, the groom came, the five virgins that had oil and lamb, they went into the groom and the door was closed. And those guys came back they go, they knock on the door, let us in, let us in. Well, Too the late. groom goes, I don't know you. Yeah. That's it. I don't know you. That's, that's, that's powerful. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to um, explain mm. anymore. When yeah. the groom says, I don't know you, he doesn't know you. How many of you know that in the wedding, the groom is the prime person Right. You want to shake your hands with, and after that, you know, you want to shake your hand with the bride. Right. But the groom mm. is the star of the wedding. Now, if he says, I don't know you, you're really uninvited. That's right. Wow. Right? That's that's pretty scary stuff. Mm. So that's why you always be ready. If you're a believer, you always be ready. Be ready with your lamp and your oil. Hope wow. that helps. Yeah, yours. it does. Because it makes more sense where it talks about you'll worship him in spirit and in truth. And even when you're talking about the parable, how when the foolish people ended up leaving to go to the merchant to get their own oil, it's like a falsification of the, of the Holy Spirit. Like you can't, you can't make a copy of it or you can't get it from somewhere else. Like you will have to understand that you already have it within your lamp. My mind is blown as I sit here, as I always say mm. <laughs> in every episode, because when you were talking earlier about the oil and I'm like, you know, I I know people who have been hurt by um, people who operate in the spirit and not have the word kind of confirm what they're doing. It's like dousing gasoline on random floor and just lighting it on fire. Yeah. And then the same thing where it's like people have, have really Bible thumped a lot of people without the movement of the Holy spirit. It's like getting, getting a glass vase and then smack it on, smacking it on somebody's head, mm. not understanding that there's actually healing power in the oil. And so now I'm just sitting here and I'm like, this is why it's so important to actually so be so founded on the word, but also mm. understand the moving of the Holy Spirit and why Jesus even said that it, it has to happen, that he had to leave. Because if mm. he didn't leave, then we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit actually giving us these downloads and revelation mm. and being able to, not just move people's hearts because it's never us. It's mm-hmm. always God because he's the one calling out to them. But it's us allowing ourselves to be that kind of pipeline to to allow the oil to flow through. So I'm just sitting here in mm-hmm. amazement because 
we always hear that that parable, but not understanding the deeper concept. I mean, I understand the um, the importance of the church preaching it in the way where we have to be ready, we have to prepare, but prepare for what? Mm-hmm. You know, in the moment that Jesus does come back, what have you done from that point on to now? Mm-hmm. And so I'm, yeah, I'm basking in a lot of yeah. that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like. Sorry, Josh. I think you. It's okay. Something. I got. I got uh, something. But go ahead, Pastor. No, prepared. I just. I just want to say this. Number one, the the passage was from Matthew twenty five, chapter twenty five, verse one to thirteen. Mm. Twenty five, one to thirteen of the book of Matthew, on the parables of the ten virgins. Now, um, I got interrupted. I was my thought was it's okay. Uh, was about, mm. uh, you know, you were talking in the last point, uh, jo- uh, Joyce, about. Um, you know, how people who are not operating in the spirit or mm-hmm. are not operating with the word, because you need both of them. Yes. You really mm-hmm. need both spirit of them. Spirit and yes. truth. Yeah. You know, you got to be ready. Mm-hmm. You got to be really mm-hmm. ready, right? So Josh, you wanted to say something. Yeah, say for something. sure. No, like I want to add want to add this up with what, what we've been talking about. Um, I, wanna just, I just want to say this. Holy Spirit is everywhere. Mm. Like, I don't know how much we, many of us understand, have this understanding that, you know, again, it's just the spirit of God, but he is a person that, mm-hmm. like we've been saying from this, from this podcast. Um, I want to point this out. We've been talking about this. I guess this is one of the emphasis of, of this, of this uh, show, this episode for today, that there is power in him. Mm-hmm. And, but as just as Pastor Tom have already mentioned, brought up uh, the parables. You know, this is what the apostles, the disciples during that time in upper room understood. Mm. They they kept the word of Jesus. They obeyed actually that, yeah, we would stay here. We would wait until we receive the gift of the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. Mm. And in fact, you know, how Jesus encouraged them, hey, John baptized me in water. But, you know, you guys, in a few days from now, you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit yes. fire. And they understood this. And I think, you know, the importance of the word in each one of us, again, you know, faith comes from hearing, hearing, hearing the word of God. And when we when we begin to acknowledge and recognize that it's in the spirit, in the in the person of the Holy Spirit, that power comes, like what Pastor mm. Tom Aborty said, that, that dunamis explosive power that that allows us to see these manifestations in, in demonstrating God's power here on earth is because of that and i think it's so important that we 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 really we would we would yield to that that we would not only you know many of us go could go to our weekly churches we we we, we receive and hear an amazing preaching mm. a very motivational word from from the from the lord from the bible and we we leave that we we leave that meeting wondering so how do we really see this in fruition and I feel like many times this is what's lacking and what's outside the picture. The understanding that 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 power is is in you because of the spirit of God. And I know there's a lot of question and and that does that has come up with this. And maybe there's some enlightenment that we could bring to our audience today. Mm. How you know we receive Jesus, we confess him out in our mouth, yeah. He is Lord. Yes. Believe that God raised him from the dead, and you know, we were saved. And the Spirit of God comes upon us that guarantee, you know, what guarantees us the Holy Spirit. But there's dif- there's a difference between Him, all of a sudden, you receiving Him, that, that gift, all of a sudden in you. And there's a part where He will actually come upon you and rest in you. And then He will enable and empower you to walk in the supernatural things of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that's why it is supernatural. And He still does does it he still performs it today and i thought we should bring this enlightenment to the audience today well i thank you for that george uh josh because you know i think it's a it's a fear thing you know like the enemy wants mm. to bring that fear into people's hearts and especially believers you know like you know well are you are you what is this you know you, you're working in, with the spirit like you know mm. Like, who is he? You know, mm. like a lot of people don't know right. that, you know, for sure. Be serious about it. But the thing is, I You're just right. want to let you know that, you know, a lot of people hear a lot about this and say, well, okay, with well, the Holy Spirit, the word, but how do, 
how do like what is what to do but you know like i always talk mm, about yeah, you know the right. promise and yeah. the prophecy in the bible the three p's you will see the promise of god mm-hmm. and the prophecy that means what's going to happen with this promise but the what to do but the principle, principle. is where people miss so mm-hmm. much of it like they it. don't un- they have the understanding so the understanding for activating both this yeah. is this simply believing Wow! Come on! Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's so, so simple. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and people so forget. They think, oh, we gotta go chase this or that convention or this mm. and that. For sure. No, you just believe mm-hmm. like Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm. You have to have the belief system of Jesus. You have to believe in the Word, right? Romans then nine, mm-hmm. uh, nine, ten, nine and ten. Mm-hmm. Um, believe in Jesus that He died and He rose again on the third day, and then. You know, and he died for you. Mm-hmm. But you also have to believe in what he said about the Holy Spirit. So when I when I depart, That's I it. will send the Holy Spirit. So you just have to believe in that. Mm-hmm. That's all you need to do. You believe. You have that belief system. Once you believe, you have that belief system. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is with me all the time. He's the power of God. He's going to do the will of God. Amen. I'm just going to believe that. Yeah. I'm just going to believe that. That's now, it. the will of God is, his original intent is that Adam didn't get sick. So this person's sick, I'm going to lay my hands on I'm going yeah. to declare yes. the original intent yes. on him with the power of the Holy Spirit within the boundaries of the Lamb, the minister of the Word, and he's healed. That's it. Wow. So simple. Mm-hmm. Yet people complicate it and make it into some sort of a religious thing, <laughs> mm-hmm. tradition, this and that, ritual, you got to do this, do that. That's why I started mm-hmm. by telling people earlier. Mm-hmm. I says when you talk about idols earlier, mm-hmm. I just tell them it's not some mm-hmm. ritualistic mm-hmm. thing you're doing. Right. It's actually according to the mm-hmm. Lamb, which is the ministry of the Word. Yeah. It's found in the Bible. Do not worship idols. That's it. Yeah. And so when you work within that, within that, that, that boundary, within the word of God, yeah. within the law of mm-hmm. God, and then you allow the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to bring it to life. That's it. The ministry mm-hmm. of the Spirit, boom. Now you mm-hmm. see healing happens. Mm-hmm. You start to see things happen. You start to see people, mm-hmm. uh, you know... Um, Transform. Yeah, just yeah. like that lady that you met in For sure. uh, California. All yeah. of a sudden, she she never had such a good sleep yeah. and mm-hmm. then wake up so good. Mm-hmm. Right? After surgery. Every pain. Yeah, all pain. Gone. Yeah. And like, yeah, thank you for bringing that up because it, this is not even man's opinion. This no. is this came up from the from the mouth of Jesus when he when he said, "Wait, just a pastor, do not be afraid, only I believe." believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So yeah. powerful, mm-hmm. very profound, but simple. And I think that's the you know being on this journey since we've done naturally supernatural. It's so simple and so profound. And I think that that's the beauty of it all, where you just have to go back to the word and confirm it with what's happening. And, you know, you always teach us, go back to Genesis, see the original plan. Mm-hmm. If it's there, then you got to go. There so, you, go. Yeah. you know, I hope everybody got, everybody enjoyed this episode. We, we miss missed this. you guys. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. miss everybody. If you guys have any questions, feel free to head on over to naturallysupernatural.life and you guys can connect with us there. Also, if you guys enjoyed some of our topics here, Pastor Tom has a few other teaching episodes on our Graceville YouTube channel. So you guys can head on over to YouTube, Graceville yes. TV, and you guys can find all his teachings over there. And until next time, everybody, God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.